Hello doctors, let's see occlusion and fixed prosthodontics. Occlusion is defined as any contact of uh, static occlusion of being closed or shut off or the static relationship between the incising and the masticatory surface of the maxillary and mandibular teeth. Articulation is defined as static and dynamic contact relation between the maxillary and mandibular teeth. Gnathology is what? It is a science to study the teeth, the muscle of mastication all together. How is it working? That science is called gnathology. Understanding the anatomy, histology, physiology, morphology of the all the organ, organs and jaws and the teeth. Mutually protected articulation, we will see in the future lecture. Canine protected also will see. Centric relation, we all know it's a maxillomandibular relationship in which the condyles articulate with the thinnest avascular portion of the respective disc in the anterior, posterior, superior position against the slopes of their articular eminence. This position is clinically indiscernible and it is independent of tooth contact when the mandible is directed superiorly and anteriorly in its transverse horizontal hinge axis. Monoplane occlusion or articulation is the arrangement of teeth by which they are positioned in a single plane, lingualized when the lingual cusp touches the maxillary area of the occlusion. So how did evolution of occlusion take place? Bonneville gave its tri triangle, sphere, uh, spherical theory was given by Monsoon, came Bonn's P giving curve of speed, there was anti-Monsoon, there was pleasures curve, there was gnathology, organic occlusion, Divan gave neutrocentric occlusion, all this coming transographic, transographic was occlusion time and they said not necessarily that all the, both the condyles have a single transverse horizontal plane. Both can have a different transverse horizontal plane which can be parallel or not parallel to each other. They had biologic occlusions which is now recently going on or the organic occlusion. Determinants of occlusion morphology. Now what are the things that determines how an occlusion should be? Now that can be determined by the posterior controlling factors that is the condylar guidance. We know what is condylar guidance. It is the way, the path, the condyle is traveling on the glenoid fossa to come down to move for the centric and eccentric motions. The anterior controlling factor which is determined by the phonetic aesthetics of the patient that is by the overjet overbite, the ridge relationship of the patient that is the incisor guidance. Vertical determinants, they are the anterior controlling factors, posterior controlling factor, they are nearest cusp to the related factors that is the cusp angle, the plane of occlusion and the compensating curves. The cuspal inclination indicates the angle of movement of the mandible between the eccentric movements and that of the centric relation. Now, is the cuspal height influenced by condylar guidance? If condylar guidance increases, will the cuspal height increase? Yes, of course. So, when the condylar guidance is increasing, there is more steeper condylar guidance, more steeper compensating curve, more steeper plane of occlusion. Hence, the cuspal height will also increase. Anterior guidance effect, how it will be? More the overjet, more the overbite more will be the height of the cusp, more will be the longer teeth which is selected and the crown size which will come. So those will be affected and the stability of the crown, offset load on the crown will come and the crown root ratio will be hampered. And if we do not follow all this thing, what will happen? What will go in stake? That is the Christian Chin's phenomena in natural occlusion. That is posterior disocclusion when there are the protrusive movements with the edge to edge bite in the central incisors. So that will go into stake. So we need to consider that effect of plane of occlusion on cuspal height. So what will happen if plane of occlusion increases? The cuspal height will decrease. Plane of occlusion decreases, the cuspal height decreases. Now that depends on the incisal guidance, of course, as well as on the curve of the sp. So curve of the sp increases, cuspal height increases. Similar is with the case of curve of the sp decreases, the cuspal height will also decrease. Now curve of the sp, we all know it passes from the tip of the canine mandibular to the molar and also from the buccal cusps of the premolars and molars and passing through the middle of the condyle.
effective mandibular lateral shift on the cuspid height. Now in the lateral shift, the Bennett shift which is happening, if the amount is more in Bennett shift, the cuspid height cannot be more because then what will happen? It will not allow the balanced or the working side, both the sides to do the eccentric movements. So we have to keep the cuspid angulation low as possible. Amount of lateral translation, now how is that decided? Now this amount of lateral translation or the Bennett movement can be of three types. It can be progressive Bennett movement, it can be lateral translation movement or it can be percurrent movement. One can go straight, one can go a little down straight like this, one can travel a little straight and then come down. So these are the different types of Bennett movements that can happen based on the amount and the direction of lateral translation. Now once the lateral translation is happening, if it is moving towards this side and our cuspal height is more, it will hinder, it will not allow the maxillary cusp to come across this particular section. So the eccentric movement will be hampered. So whenever we are placing any crown or a fixed partial denture, we are supposed to mark the eccentric movements and find out if there is any hindrance. That means the amount of lateral translation, the direction and the timing basically should not be affected with the help of the height of the cusp heights. So immediate and progressive side shift as we spoke about, immediate side shift is directly 4mm down it comes up. Progressive side shift, it will travel that within a span of time and pre-current as it will go a little straight and then come down. So all this thing, the basic idea of knowing the time types of Bennett movements are in all those kind of Bennett movement, there should be no hindrance in the lateral excursion movement, no hindrance in the protrusive movement due to the heights of the cusp. Now coming to occlusion and fixed partial denture. In natural teeth, what are the different occlusions that can be there? Canine guided occlusion, name itself is saying. Uh, occlusion which is guided with the help of canine. When there is eccentric motion, when there is centric motion, protrusive motion, canine is the teeth which will guide all these movements. The only teeth in contact will be canine. That is mutual, it is a type of a mutually protected occlusion. What does mutually protected occlusion say? It says that when the anteriors are in contact, let the posteriors disocclude. And when the posteriors are in contact, let not the anteriors occlude. So in that way, they are mutually protecting the anterior and the posterior anatomy of the cusps and the teeth. So occlusal contact patterns, how it can be? It can be cusp to fossa relation. It can be cusp to cusp relation. It can be fossa to fossa relation. The efficient is cusp to fossa relation having a tripod effect on the cusp. That is, if this is my cusp, if we mark the cusp with triangle, the triangle will have a highest dependent point. That highest dependent point should touch the fossa. For example, here. If this is my cusp, this point is the highest dependent point. Now, this point should touch the fossa. Here itself, it is giving a motor pestle activity. But this cusp height will also determine the eccentric movement. If this is high, this teeth has to way follow this curvature to come this side. So this has to be in the alignment. Now group function which was given by Baron, what was group function saying? Group function as the name is suggesting, every teeth is functioning as a single group. That means if you are doing a lateral excursion, on the working side there is contact all over. Non-working side or the balancing side, of course there is no contact. But the working side, all is contact. Similarly, on when you are doing protrusive movement, everything is contact. There is no chance of Christensen's phenomena in these cases. We see these things in balanced occlusion, but in fixed partial denture or in natural occlusion, when they start happening, that is called groove function kind of occlusion. It is good, this kind of occlusion is better to give in a full mouth rehabilitation with a patient who has a parafunctional habit. So what will happen? Not one teeth will be affected. Like in canine guided, what happens? Only canine is getting affected all the time. The proprioceptive responses or the tactile senses of the canine can get disrupted after a certain amount of time. So group function is good in those cases for the aged patient. The patients who have parafunctional habits. 
high force of occlusion those cases give groove function tankiman schuler's philosophy was a very nice philosophy which came across the years together when panky came gave his own theory then the man scientist came over and then schuler gave the final contribution and there was an entire philosophy which was made according to pankyman's philosophy which followed mutually protected occlusion or a canine protected occlusion it says that first replace both the anterior segments that is the maxillary and mandibular anterior segments once that is decided and that is decided based on what it is decided based on the phonetics based on the aesthetics of the patient so once that is decided now the next should be your mandibular posteriors so once the mandibular posteriors are made those will follow the curve of spi now when the mandibular posteriors are following the curve of spi while you are doing how will they they follow so there was something introduction of a thing of a material of a flag which was called brodrick's analysis or brodrick's flag analysis what was done in that what we did is we took a compass we marked the cusp angle or the canine tip and we marked one arc similarly with a 4 inch we took another why 4 inch because spherical theory remember monsoon saying that 8 inch of diameter so 4 inch is the radius so 4 inch you will take from canine you will mark an arc from molar mesiobuccal you will mark another arc and where the mark arc is marked from there now you will rotate your compass and mark on the tooth so whichever area is coming above that marking you need to reduce that marking intra orally this philosophy was all about pankyman schuler philosophy which supported and spoke about canine guided occlusion or mutually protected occlusion in all so that he supported mutually protected occlusion so canine protected occlusion as i told you why was canine given so much of importance the canine was given so much of importance because of three reason one long roots the proprioceptive response and the nerval activity was found to be having more impulse from canine to that of the brains so if there is some disturbance in the occlusion canine was the first one to understand and recollect it and recorrect it so canine was given preference of having that occlusion over it when there was a lateral excursion movements and of course because this is a cornerstone so this was the easiest where you can have the canine to canine occlusion of maxillary and mandibular arch thompson said later on in the new of your days that biologic occlusion or organic occlusion is the best way to calculate and proceed to think for occlusion that is not only our teeth per se is responsible for occlusion but also the muscles of mastication the tonicity clonicity and the tonic closure and opening of our entire mouth is controlled by the muscles so the nerves the muscle the teeth the mucosa and our neuromuscular control of the human being all together came across the organic occlusion so now when we consider occlusion it is our prime requisite to only not only see whether it is canine guided groove function or mutual product also we are supposed to see if the muscle coordination is good if that person's tonic opening and closure activity is good of the mouth and if that persists still nicely our occlusion in way may it be canine guided may it be mutually protected or for that matter group function will not have any detrimental effect on the mucosa on the ridge on the muscle activity of the human and also most importantly we need to decide the occlusion based on its previous occlusion if that person is habituated with the occlusion of canine protected don't go ahead by changing it to group function give a canine protected occlusion so when you are planning a fixed partial denture over a canine or any apartment retainer coming over the canine you need to keep in mind that the patient earlier had a canine guided occlusion you are supposed to restore it back to the occlusion the patient had before entering to you as for the treatment of the missing edentulous area
coming to the barons of usual concepts which came across with the tripod effect which i spoke about before that if an occlusion cusp has three points the middle point of that should be in between and also there were two different terminologies which came across functional cusp and non-functional cusp so functional cusp was the upper palatal cusp and for the lower it was the buccal cusp so these cusps were thought to be kept a little lower and the more force was concentrated on these particular cusps because these were the cusps which were going to do the function so hence it was named as a functional cusp now we will see what are the things that we need to do to preserve our functional cusp in our further classes the biologic or the physiologic occlusion, as I told you, that you need to consider not only the teeth, also the mucosa, surrounding structure, mobility, vitality of the teeth, carious lesion, the muscle, muscle nature, the tonicity of the muscles present, the facial expression, the neuromuscular control of the patient, all these things have to be taken under consideration. Now, restoring different combinations, we'll see one by one, if it is a single crown, then restore the position in ICP, that is intercuspal position. It is a, a simple hinge articulator can be used. Fixed partial dent in one quadrant, again you can do it in intercuspal position. But in case you have it in several quadrants, you need to find out the long centric of the patient. Now the question arises, what is this long centric? Now long centric or area in centric or also known as freedom in centric or also known as a movement in centric is nothing but it is that point from where we keep the mouth in centric we close the mouth in centric and then do a tight closure like this without changing the vertical dimension of the person the amount that the teeth is moving from the light centric contact to the heavy maximal intercuspation that freedom which is there in the teeth is called the long centric so you need to find out the long centric and also close the fixed partial dent of several quadrant based on the long centric of the present patient so in those cases of long centric which is the best kind of occlusion that we can give is a group function occlusion which is advocated in those kind of patient so occlusion planning in a fixed partial denture is not very tricky but yes it requires little amount of science and analyzing the present situation which is there in the patient so do not change the present situation rather restore it back to what the patient had previously for the occlusion in fixed partial denture. Thank you.